All right, in this video, we'll do a very quick tutorial on how to install firmware on a GPS receiver. I happen to have a, a Hyper HR on my desk here connected with a USB cable already. I don't have the firmware that I need for it, but this is the purpose of the video. So if you don't already have uh, visited the topcompositioning.com site, go there, sign up or log in. I'll hit login. Once again, my username, my password are already in here. So I'll just sign in. Uh, a good rule of thumb is if you're doing any firmware updates, always plug in the actual uh, GPS receiver to power so that you don't lose power by any chance. So mine is already plugged into the wall and charging while I'm talking here. So let's go into my Topcon. And under my Topcon, once again, if you don't have your HyperHR listed in the list here, you should be able to go to products. And again, to, for today's purpose, it is a HyperHR that I'm installing. So we'll do HyperHR over here. And we will hit the firmware and the software updates. And we'll scroll down. Uh, and you can choose which firmware you actually want to install, of course. But today's purpose is the newest version that I'm installing is just PowerBoard version or PowerBoard firmware over here. So I'll hit the download button and let the computer download the actual firmware the firmware is down here it's downloaded and what i want to do just to make it simple for example it's in my downloads folder on my computer but just to make it a little simpler to actually find what i will do i will put it in a new folder call it firmware And I'll just paste it right in here. So now the prerequisites to actually do it are that you have to have Topcon receiver utility already installed. The receiver is already uh, connected via a serial cable, or in this case, it's a USB cable, but it's uh, considered serial by the devices, by the USB drivers that were installed earlier. So if I go into device, I can now go into firmware loading. So instead of uh, actually going into the receiver management which uh, we did in a previous video we'll go into firmware loading here and we'll hit connect and it is again remember considered a serial port it should be our gadget or whatever it's called com3 serial number when i hit connect you will not have a, a very positive uh, confirmation about the connection there is a little green uh, circle here which is a good indication but otherwise just go into firmware loading and in the firmware loading, you can select uh, what you're actually uploading. And we're uploading PowerBoard. Otherwise, mostly it's either receiver if you're doing a GNSS uh, firmware or PowerBoard if you're doing PowerBoard or the others are machine control. These uh, you don't have to use with survey grade uh, GPS receivers. Occasionally, there might be a peripheral device. But again, mostly 95% of the time will be between receiver and PowerBoard. Today, it's PowerBoard. So we'll go there. Uh, firmware image format we can actually uh, leave that be it is TFI so we'll hit next it's uh, what uh, showing you the actual version that we have uh, what we have on the receiver right now we'll hit next all these defaults are correct so don't need to change any of these defaults now let's go into firmware flash image so this is where we'll find it where we had it on our desktop so I'll go into desktop uh, firmware and here we go put it open and just hit next and you'll see that it is really quickly installed it's a very small file for the uh, board firmware or the mm, power board firmware but uh, just heed the warning over here do not turn the off the receiver now the actual receiver is flashing lights it's going to power off and then they'll come back on after it applies the actual firmware so we'll hit ok over here there's not much we do right now because it's really uh, time to actually uh, just wait for the, uh, this function to actually finish. Uh, once it's done, we can switch over to the receiver managing mode, just like I did over here. You heard the computer actually disconnect from the uh, GPS because it went off. Now it's powering back on. So when it is fully on, we should be able to connect to it. So right now, while it's actually powering on, we should have a couple of failed connections. And you see that the, the receiver is actually come, coming back online, but slowly, uh, once again, because it came online after a reboot 
uh, the computer is trying to enumerate what's actually on it. So you'll see this little window pop up and cause these issues. Again, because I was in the process of uh, connecting to it while it was being rebooted, you might actually see that uh, your Top Gun receiver utility closes. And once again, we'll just reopen and do a connection and see if it's fully booted yet. And you can see if the connection is still not there, all the baud rates will cycle through uh, all the variations. And this just tells you that the receiver is still sleeping or still applying the actual operating system, um, either the firmware off the board or the firmware off the actual GNSS receiver. So uh, give it a couple of more minutes and then try again. Just like you see over here, uh, the receiver cannot be detected. It's just a message because the actual power board firmware is still being inserted uh, into the operating system. And all we see is a flashing red and green light on the battery indicator. And then there's a flashing red light on the actual uh, satellite indicator. So just hang out, sit back and let it finish its own routine. So after uh, probably about 10, 15 minutes, the actual receiver comes back on. We can ignore this message and try the connection again. And you'll see that it actually connects. Same receiver as before. We did go into, instead of firmware loading, into receiver managing for this connection. So you see we are already connected. Uh, to verify that the firmware actually was loaded, you can look at the version here, which would be something that you know should kind of uh, mimic this number over here so 221 apparently 221 so our firmware loading was successful while we're here you can always look at the actual other firmware which is the firmware for the uh, gnss board so if we go here and we see that there's 51 p6 was the last one um, for this receiver uh, what is it today uh, december 18th 2018 uh, it might of, cor of course change but today that's the newest firmware so there's no need to actually change anything there and again if we were to install that firmware we disconnect change our mode to firmware loading device again connect via the com3 or whatever com number is associated on your computer hit connect firmware loading uh, instead of doing the power board, we'll leave it, say, receiver. Don't need to change any of these here. We'll just hit next. And once again, it just prompts us for uh, our settings here. Hit next. All of these settings should stay the same. And then I will not be doing anything because I don't have another firmware, but we'll just find it um, once again uh, from whatever location where we actually download and unzip it to. Um, all right. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any other questions or comments, let me know, and I'll see you in the next video.